Take a break from your busy schedule and join Harold Sala for Guidelines, a five-minute commentary on living. With only hours to live, Guy Duffield, my father-in-law, asked me to turn to Psalm 78. He asked me to read where God laid down directives, in the words of the psalmist, which he commanded our forefathers to teach their children, so the next generation would know them, even the children yet to be born, and they in turn would tell their children. Then Pop, that's what my wife and I affectionately called him, turned to me and in a gesture that was so unlike this man who quietly then asked, Harold, do you think I've done that? There were no cracks in his armor. His integrity was flawless. He was one of the most godly men I ever knew. For 72 years he had faithfully preached the gospel. Yet knowing that he was about to enter heaven's portals, he wanted to make sure he had passed the baton of faith to his children and to his grandchildren. How important is a father in the lives of his offspring? Far more important than we usually acknowledge. The short list reads that a dad is an emotional stabilizer, a teacher, an example, a leader, a listener, and an encourager. Dads contribute something unique to their offspring. While mothers say, be careful or you'll hurt yourself, dads say, sure you can do it, go ahead, give it a try. The world is not always user-friendly, so when a dad has a positive word or an encouraging hug, it means a lot to the development of a son or daughter. This also means that the deepest wounds a child can sustain can come from a careless, thoughtless dad whose quest for identity is found only in his son's accomplishment, saying, What's the matter with you? You're just no good. Stings for life. A good dad leads by example, rather than as a policeman or a traffic director, enforcing laws with punishment when they are broken. Writing to dads in the city of Thessalonica, Paul talked about the contribution that dads make to their children. He says they are, one, a source of encouragement, two, a source of comfort to kids who struggle with their own self-worth, and three, a force for good and God which offsets the corruption and depravity of a godless world. He wrote, For you know that we deal with each of you as a father deals with his own children, encouraging, comforting, and urging you to live lives worthy of God who calls you into his kingdom and glory. When Pop asked if I thought he had done what the psalmist said we ought to do, I replied, Pop, if anyone ever did that, you have. I meant it, too. Perfect, no, but consistent and faithful, giving us an example that was untarnished. Forever embedded on my memory is the scene from the Olympics of 1992 when Derek Redmond pulled a muscle two-thirds of the way through the 400-meter race. Writhing in pain on the track, Derek finally pulled himself to his feet and attempted to drag himself toward the finish line. His father, seeing the pain of his son, jumped over the barricade and made his way to the boy on the track. Embracing him, the son leaned on his dad, and the two of them slowly hobbled, making their way to the finish line. By the time he got there, all the other runners had long since crossed the line, but the pluck of an athlete leaning on his dad allowed him to finish. Dads come in all kinds and flavors, but every dad makes a difference. Every dad, negatively or positively, influences his children. That is certain. Dad, be the best dad you can, the one God wants you to be. You've just heard Dr. Harold Sala with Guidelines, a five-minute commentary on living. If you would like to listen to the program again, download a copy, subscribe to our e-commentary, or view other resources, visit guidelines.org. We would like to hear from you, too. You can email us at info at guidelines.org. That's info at guidelines.org. Thanks for listening, and we invite you to join us again for the next edition of Guidelines.